at the third heaven. We want to take a good look at the place where God lives, the abode of God. That is the third heaven, the abode of God. It is above and far beyond outer space. It is the place of God's eternal throne, the throne of God. In the third heaven, billions of angels live there. The only way to get to the third heaven is in the spirit. Yes. Because it is in the spiritual realm, far, far beyond the skies, where no one knows the location. God's abode exists outside of the universe. The universe that we live in, God's abode, the third heaven, is outside of this universe. Now think about that. It's outside of our time. It's outside of our dimension. Because it exists in eternity. Now we looked at that first heaven last week. We looked at the second heaven last week, the week before. And I was just thinking about it. Isn't it a wonder how man has learned how to maneuver and fly in the first and the second heaven? Flying planes and helicopters in the first heaven. And then as time went by, he invented a way to get into the second heaven where the sun, moon, stars, Jupiter, and Mars are by way of rockets, spaceships, through technology. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Man has done some, the Bible talks about it, in the last days knowledge would increase. And, and, and a man has really come up with some, some big stuff. I mean, getting into outer space yes. and going to the moon, that's, that's, that's way out there now. But the third heaven, where God lives, he hasn't found a way. Nor does he know how to get there. Man doesn't know its location or what direction to go in to get there. Because the only way to get there is that God takes you there. They will never find the third heaven. The prophet Elijah was taken there by heaven's fiery chariot. Enoch was snatched up by God and taken there to the place where God lived. Only God can take you there. Mm -hmm. And one day soon, Amen. in the not so distant future, and it could be any day now, yes. scripture says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yes. And the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remaining shall be called up together in the clouds to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, it says. God's going to take us there. That's the only way you can get there where God lives is that God takes you there. The Apostle Paul talks about his experience when he was taken up into the third heaven in the spirit in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You can turn there quickly. We want to look at it. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He has a vision. And he's not really sure whether it's in the body or out of the body. This experience that he had like no one else has ever had. First chapter 12, verse 1, and it says, It is doubtless not probable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, now 
he's speaking about himself. He's referring to himself in the third person when he's telling this. Do not sound proud. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know, God knows, such a one was called up to the third heaven. Notice what he was called up to, where God is, the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. I understand what he's talking about. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now notice, when he's up there, he's hearing things, he's receiving these revelations, and they're inexpressible. In fact, he wasn't permitted to come back down here and talk about it. Not only was he not permitted to talk about it, he couldn't talk about it because it was inexpressible. He couldn't find the words to describe the things he was hearing while he was up there in glory, in heaven. Of such a one, I will boast. Yet of myself, I will not boast except in my infirmities. For, through, for though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me about what he sees me to be or hears from me. Because of this experience, he didn't want people to look at him like he was just so, you know, up on a pedestal like, wow, you had that experience, you had that privilege, you're one of a kind, wow. But look at verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. God gives him a thorn in the flesh. Lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that he might depart from me, that it might depart from me. God gives them this thorn in the flesh. We don't know what the thorn was. Some have speculated what the thorn was, but no one knows. It could have been, more likely, these people that were always trying to destroy his ministry. It was constantly hounding him, and they were sent by Satan, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, to get on my nerves, to bother me, to agitate me. And he said to me, and he asked God three times, Lord, take this away, take this away, take this away. And God would do it. If that's something, God would not do it. Sometimes you might ask God to do something he don't do. But if he don't do it, he has his reasons for not doing it. And we have to understand that and not get all up in arms and get upset with God, get mad with God, get indifferent with God, and get into sin when we, you know, don't want to receive what the Lord is doing. See, when God doesn't do exactly what you want him to do, you still have to have faith in him anyway. You have to trust him that he's in charge, he knows what he's doing, and he's a purpose behind what he's doing. And it might not tell you what it is. Because he's God. The idea is, trust me. I know what I'm doing. Watch this. I don't make mistakes. There's reasons behind this that you don't know about. And I don't have to reveal that to you. Why? Because he's sovereign and he's God. I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I believe and I believe and I believe and it didn't happen, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Why are you stressing yourself out over there? You have to put that in God's hand and move on. You got to get past that. Move on, 
somebody shall move on. Move on. Somebody shall get past that. Get past that. The great apostle Paul, oh, who's written three thirds uh, 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 of the New Testament, and, and, and God didn't, didn't move him. Now, if God don't answer anybody, much as he used Paul, and then he went up to heaven and saw all this stuff and heard all this stuff, that man got some clout with God, don't you think? It looked like when he prayed, God said yes. But he prayed three times, not once, three times. And the Lord said, nope. Nope. No. Now he had to deal with that. But the Lord says, in verse 9, he said, he said, pray that he might depart from me. And he said to me, God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough for you. See, are you resting and lingering in his grace? See, how you gonna get the this? Rest in his grace. Lean on his grace. Grace is power. That's one definition. It's strength. That's what grace is. And it comes from God. It has nothing to do with you. It's not your own inner energy. Or your own human ability and effort. It's the grace of God. The power of God. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. That means when you're weak, if you rest in him, you're strong. See, when you're at your weakest point, you're not at disadvantage. That's when you got the advantage. Because that's when the God's power, his grace, rises up in you and watch this, carries you through what you would normally be able to get through on your own. Child, how you get how you going through that? The grace of God. Because that's some stuff that I've gone through, maybe some of you have gone through that if it was not for God's grace, you'd be in the same asylum. You'd be in a straight jacket. Banging your head against the padded cell. You wouldn't know what to do. You'd be ready to blow your brains out. Jump out of a window. Take a bottle of pills. Do yourself in. But the grace of God keeps you. Holds you together. Hallelujah. God tells him, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And notice what he says. Look at his attitude. Therefore, most gladly. Look at the attitude he took on. He's glad now. He got some joy. Most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look at that. Therefore I take pleasure, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. Notice Christ's sake. And I like how he ends it. For when I am weak, then I am strong. <laughs> he says, when I'm weak, that's when I'm at my strongest point. Oh, uh, how many understand that? When you're at your weakest, that's really when you're at your strongest. Because it's God carrying you through. You all be glad. That the Lord is able to carry you through. Hallelujah. 
Some of y'all facing something today. Some of you dealing with something today. Some of you went through some stuff this past week. Thank you, Lord. The devil messing with you. People messing with you. All kinds of stuff happening. And coming from all sides and directions. But you got to rest in God's grace. Turn it over to Jesus. He can handle what you can't handle. His grace. Oh yeah, give God some glory somehow. Oh, God's trying to talk to somebody right now. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 6, we see a picture of God's throne when the prophet Isaiah was being called by God. God pulls back the spiritual curtain and allows Isaiah to see and experience what very few have seen. In Isaiah chapter 6, you can turn there quickly if you will. Read a little bit of that. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Notice, he sees the Lord. The Lord is sitting on a throne. That means he's up in heaven. Because that's where his throne is. So he's taking getting a peek into heaven. He said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. Notice that the Lord's throne is not low. It's in an elevated position. It's high. Oh my God. And it's lifted up. And it says, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Notice in heaven, the Lord's glorious, eternal robe fills the temple. The whole temple is filled with his glorious robe. God's residue. God's leftover. Ugh. I don't want nobody else's leftovers, but I'll take God's. Just give me a little bit of leftover to make it do. The leftover will take you far. Hallelujah. His train, the train of the rope filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, these angelic beings. Each one had six wings, and with two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he flew. Look at these angelic beings swarming around the glory around God's throne, flying in the midst. Flying in the midst, and they covered their face. They cover their faces, they cover their eyes because God is so holy and so awesome, so magnificent, so powerful that we dare not gaze at him. We dare not look at him. He's so glorious. He's so marvelous. He's so wonderful. We can't even stand hardly to be in his presence. That's how awesome God is. And we're talking about angelic beings. Hallelujah. So they cover their faces to not even gaze on it. They cover their feet. That, that's, that's, a ref, that, that's referred to them being lowly. So they cover their feet up and they fly in the midst and one cried to another and said, so they kind of like ping ponging off each other. Talking back, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Notice what they're saying. Holy, holy, holy. Three times. Now the three can be referenced to the trial, triune God here. Because God is three persons in one. But then again, 
They're crying, holy, holy, holy. Because out of all that God is, he's first and foremost holy. So they place an emphasis on him. What is he? Who is he? Holy, holy, holy. God introduces himself sometimes as being holy. Because that's who he is at the kernel of God, at the core of God is, is holy. Out of all his attributes, he's first and foremost holy. Holy. And that's why he tells us, be holy because I am holy. That's what he tells us. Us to be holy because he's holy. And he doesn't like to be in the midst of anything unholy. Amen. And let me tell you something, there ain't no one holiness in heaven. Amen. So they're crying, holy, 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 because everything up here, every nook and every crack is filled with his holiness. Just the whole earth is full of his glory. Talk about creation. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. Yeah. Presence of the Lord. It's so thick in there, you can cut it with a knife. House was filled with smoke. So I said, this is the prophet Isaiah, woe is me for I am undone. When he gets in the presence of all holy almighty God, he recognizes how unholy he is. See, you, you'll recognize how unholy you are when you get in his holy presence. You, you will see your true colors. You, you will see how insignificant you really are. You ain't trying to find no mirrors to look in and I am fine today. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You are nothing today. Not, not in the presence of the Lord. No, no, no. Not when you're in his midst. See, now it's all about him. All eyes on him. All focus on him. It's all about him when he's in the house. He says, woe is me, for I am undone. What is he saying? He's basically saying, I'm falling apart. I, I, woe is me, uh, uh, I, I, I'm coming apart, I'm falling apart here in the midst of his presence. I, I can't handle this because I am a man of unclean lips. See, he recognizes who he is. Uh, I got a potty mouth. Uh, I unclean lips here. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Talk about his background. My family talk like this. Uh, any of y'all come from a bunch of cusses? You're professional cussing. I hope you're not if you say. <laughs> That ought to be you used to be. <laughs> Unclean lips. Anybody get to sanctify that tongue today? Uh, we didn't got quiet. Huh? <laughs> Keep on worshiping the Lord. Just sanctify them lips. Yeah, repent. And that dirty mouth. Oh, Lord, help us. He said, I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Look at me. He wanted to say some flu to me, having in his hand a live coal which had he had taken from the tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said behold this has touched your lips 
your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Look what God will do for you. Also, I heard a voice from the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Now that he's been purged, now he's been touched, his mouth has been cleansed. Now he's ready for his call. And the Lord says, uh, Whom shall I send? Looking for a response. And who will go for us? Then, he, then I said, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. You might be here today, and the Lord is saying to you, Who will go for us? To you. Your response ought to be, here am I, send me. What am I saying? It, he might be calling. Is he calling you today? Is he calling you by your name? Is he calling you to do something? Is he calling you up to another level? Is he calling you out of something? Into something? Is he calling you? Your response ought to be, send me. And he said, go and tell the people. Now he sends him on a mission. He's ready to go and proclaim the word of the Lord yes. now yes. that he's had this experience. Let me move on. Turn to Revelation chapter 4, if you will. Revelation chapter 4, where John is in the spirit. He's called up to God's throne in heaven. God allows him to see things no one has seen. Also, Revelation chapter 4, and I think I kind of mentioned this scripture last week quickly. Revelation chapter 4. And, uh, well, I might as well just do some reading here. After these things, verse 1, I look and behold a door standing open in heaven. Notice, up there. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Talk about the future, the last day. Immediately, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven. Notice, he's in the third heaven. He's up there. He's taken there, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardine stone in appearance. Oh my Lord. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Look at, look at what's happening around the throne. Look at the scene there. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on, uh, on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. And, from the throne proceeding, proceeded lightning, thundering, and voices. Notice what's protruding from the throne of God. These lightnings and these thunderings going on in these voices, signifying the power, the essence. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God, and seven is probably representing the fullness of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. Notice what's before the throne, a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes. So we've got these angelic beings again, four living creatures full of eyes. There's eyes all over them from head to toe. In front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature like had the face of a man, like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night. They don't go to sleep. 
they do not rest day or night saying, holy, holy, holy. Looks like the scene in Isaiah chapter 3. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, watch it, who was and is and is to come. They declare this eternal God who was, who is, and is to come. Where did God come from? There's never been a time when God was not. You won't never make it. There has never been a time when God was not. Who created? There has never been a time. God is not created. He's a creator. God has always been. He said, who was? Past tense. Who is? Present tense. And is to come. Future tense. He's eternal. This God we're talking about. Now this is really amazing and it blows my mind when I think about it. I don't take this light. It's something to think about if you let your mind think about it. And just don't take this light like it ain't nothing. Because this is a big deal. If the angels who live in heaven and they are constantly before God all the time. They've been with him for since the twelfth of Bethlehem. <laughs> they, they've been there for a long time. Eon. So they know God real good, I'd say. Because the more you're around somebody, the more you know them. The more you get used to them. Watch this. The more you might just start to take them for granted. Because I'm used to them now. See, see that's what familiarity will do. <laughs> yeah, you may have saw them in this light at one point, but you got to be familiar with them. I know them now. No big deal. They've been with God all this time. Around the throne, they know stuff about him that we don't don't know. Now we'll know more once we get in eternity. But they they know him, know him, know him. But guess what? They haven't gotten used to him. See, we, we got used to God. Clap your hands before the Lord. You used to it. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you used to it now. You too familiar. You take it in for granted. I don't care what you say. The word of God coming forth. You got too familiar. Yeah, you're a little bit too, yeah, yeah, you're a little too, too familiar there. Doesn't mean that much to you now. You done got used to them. Remember when you first got saved, you were on fire, couldn't get enough. When is church going to start? They, they canceled church today. I sure wanted to be there. I'm ready to go to church. Hell, they didn't need to add another service. I can't wait. Oh, I'm there early. Nobody was there to open up the door. Oh, you were on fire here because you didn't know him that well. But once you got to know him, all of a sudden, <laughs> 15 minutes late. Mmm. I should get used to it. Now you ain't gonna dare be like you work. And you sure ought to be used to that job right now. <laughs> 
But you ought to get more than you ought to die because it don't matter when I get dead. Because God ain't no big deal to you. Oh, I don't care what you say. Your action speaks louder than anything you can bumbo jump. Oh, 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 oh. Talk all day. But if your walk ain't matching up with your talk, you need to shut your jaw. <laughs> We get used to God. The point is, they ain't used to Him. So they rest not day or night. Wait a minute. Day or night? A continual praise, worship, adoration, paying homage to this. Holy, wonderful, awesome creator of the universe. Yeah. Because we ain't used to him. And we have been here for eons. But he's it's still fresh to us. He's still holy, holy, holy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Yeah. We can't say it enough. Because we know who he is. We know how awesome he is. And we dare not take it for granted. They see them in the right light. Well, we as humans get used to this awesome God who was and is and is to come. Verse 11. Look at what it says. They say, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. What did, what did he do? Created all things. He created all things. Sorry, Mr. Scientist. He created all things. That was, that was this big bang theory that just exploded things into existence, came up, no, 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 no. He created all things. Did he come on their own? Everything has a creator. What? God Almighty, you created all things. Notice what they say. They know, and by your will, they exist and were created. Everything that exists is by His will. Yes. Everything that exists was created by Him. Don't ever forget that. Everything. Everything. Everything that you have, everything that you own, everything that you desire, everything that you don't have. Everything that you can see, touch, smell, hear. God is the creator. Amen. Amen. And by his will, they exist. The will of God. You and I are here because it is God's will. Amen. Don't ever forget that. See, you could be gone, puffed. In five minutes. You could be. But it is God's will that you're sitting here right now. There are some people that didn't make it into today. They didn't see this day. They're alive yesterday. Had dinner. Sitting around with family. Had a good time. Made plans for the day. But at the stroke of midnight, it was their last day alive and they didn't know it. We exist because of Him. That's why we're here. You and I. Hallelujah. Y'all thank God for another day. I thank you.
Because I'm here. And I almost wasn't here a few months ago. But because of the Lord's will, Hallelujah. And I knew I wasn't going nowhere. The whole time. I knew I wasn't going nowhere. And there been others worried and concerned, but not me. I knew the Lord had me in his hands. He let me know that. He let me know why I was going through it. And it was for his glory. And that I was going to come through it from the get go. I had no fear, not one iota, not one, not one day. The doctors and the nurses wondered, what's the matter with you? Because you ought to be acting sicker than this. No! <laughs> How you doing today, Mr. Moore? Oh, wonderful in the Lord. Yeah, but the test show, the, the, the test show on one thing. You ought to be unconscious right now. But you ought to kind of talking and eating and moving around and watching TV and we, we don't get this. You're, 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 you're kind of a miracle. You're, 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 we, we, we haven't had no nothing like quite like this. They were almost getting mad that I wasn't acting sick. We don't get this. I do. I'm in God's hands. And this, I'm just going through this. This is like a test. I'm going through it, and I'm going to get through to the other side. I know it. I'll be out here in a, out here in a few days. They're thinking I'm crazy. I'm, what are you doing talking like this? Because I believe in God, I'm a man of God, I trust God, I'm not going to preach it and not live it. I'm trusting God. I'm in God's hands right now. He knows what he's doing, and I will wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody give God some praise to Glory to God. Psalms 11 verse 4 says, The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. Ezekiel chapter 11 speaks of God's throne. Daniel chapter, 11, chapter 7 verse 9 and 10. I won't go to these scriptures. You can write them down and look at them in your own uh, private worship time. Daniel chapter 7 uh, verses 9 and 10 describe God's holy throne and identifies him as the ancient of days seated on the heavenly throne as judge of the earth. That's who God is. He's the judge of the earth. One day God's going to judge the earth. Everybody who has ever lived on the planet going to stand before God one day. Amen. Everybody got to stand before the judge and answer to God. Listen, heaven is real. Yes, it is. And God who created it is real. Yes, it is. And one day every, everyone who is saved will go there uh -huh. to live forever. By faith, we patiently wait for that transformation from mortal to immortality, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53. We will be changed moment, twinkling of an eye. Get to glory. Anybody ready for him? You try to wrap it up. That's why living for Jesus is worth it all. Because when you leave this world, you are immediately ushered into the place where God lives. 
if you are saved. Amen. Notice, if you are saved. Amen. He tells the thief on the cross, Jesus, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Hanging on that tree, dying on the cross. Uh -huh. And the thief beside him, he said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. What an awesome thing. After living in this troubled world, everybody ought to want to go to heaven. Amen. After you've gone through all the stuff you've gone through, down here, and most folk call this hell on earth, anyway, you don't want to die and go do the hell, real hell after being on earth. Some people gonna go from the expression or from hell to hell. Hell on earth to the eternal lake of fire. You have had it bad in this life and in the afterlife. That's not good. Now, with all that's going on in the world, look, there's a better place than this place. And it's with Jesus. Anybody want to go to heaven? All right, let me go back to this place. You all want to go to heaven to be with Jesus. My experience back in 1979 in the month of May, it only strengthened my faith in heaven, believe in heaven and in eternity. When God took me there in my out of body experience to heaven, I went to glory in my out of body experience. Many of you heard the story I've told you that I went to hell first and experienced hell. Mm -hmm. And after there, then God took me to glory to see the other side. I won't get into all of that. It'll take a minute to talk about that experience. But I do remember that when I was going up to glory at the speed of light, Out of my body, the speed of light. I mean, it was awesome. I could hear, and it was so loud. It, was, it sounded like the, the the it was coming from inside. It was so loud it burst your eardrums. And I was as I was shooting up, I was shooting into the light which I entered into, I know it was God's presence, His glory. And all I could see was light, brightness. This, is, this brilliance is, is brighter than the noon day. If looking at the sun is unbearable, this was a thousand times brighter than the sun. This glory is undescribable. White light. Just white. Total whiteness. And I remember tears running coming down my eyes. I remember feeling all the joy, excitement, total peace. I mean, you've heard of people who've died maybe on an operating table or whatever, and they were gone for a while and they revived them and came back and they had this experience or whatever, and they didn't want to come back. You don't want to come back. When you feel it, when you in this presence like that, you, you feeling and experiencing all of that, you, you that's it. Uh -huh. You don't want to know anything else. I, I remember, oh, just, oh gosh, it was just awesome. Words cannot describe the feeling and the experience. And I remember as I was getting closer and closer, 
It looked like I was going into this bright light, what was there. And as I got closer and closer and closer, and it looked like I was going forever, 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 forever. It, but as I got closer and closer, when I almost got to it, I could see what I thought was the face of Jesus protruding out of the light. In and out of the light. Back and forth. And he was smiling at me. And, I, and, I, and that made me more excited. Oh, take me all the way. But as I got almost to it, I remember I felt like I was about to explode like dynamite. Because I could not take being in his presence like that. And I, I'm not even in my, I'm out of my body and still can't take it. Almost like those seraphim going, they can't look, they can't do it. I understand a portion of that. And just when I thought I was about to explode into oblivion and be no more, I was back in my living room. Just like that. From the light in my living room, hovering up by the ceiling. I remember this. I'll never forget. You don't forget nothing like this. I'm back in the living room. Hovering up at, I was in the ceiling, uh, up by the ceiling, looking down at my body. My spirit up here, looking down at my body, laying down on the couch with the Bible in my, because I was reading the Bible on my chest. And my eyes were wide open. My spirit's up here, I'm looking down at me with my eyes wide open. And as I've told you before, little by little, God allowed me to come back down into my body. Heaven is real. God is real. It's real because the Bible says it's real. And I believe it. By faith, but I also experienced going there. So I, 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 I know that I know that I know. You can't convince me that it's not real. God is real. Heaven is real. And he's coming back again. Soon. And if you're not ready, woe be it unto you. You want to be ready when it comes. If you're not ready, get ready.